this July 1st meeting of the DRB to order. Um, begin by introducing board members, starting uh, Kevin. Uh, Kevin O'Connell, board member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Rob Goodwin, the chair. Joe board member. And Alex. Uh, yep, she's on meeting. Alex Halas, board member. Ready. Wonderful. And uh, so, turn it right over to Meredith uh, for a quick review of the uh, meeting procedures um, and questions anyone has related to that. Yep, give me a second because the other meeting so late, I did not open my documents. All right. So, I'm going to share my screen for anybody who hasn't done this before. It's up there. I'm going to move yep. down. Otherwise, I can't see. You're going to move down further? Yeah, I'm going to move okay. to uh, next to Kevin because oh, okay. I'm not going to be able to see that. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. Yep. Um. All right. While well, I'm doing this. So, oh, of course, I don't have my cheat sheet. Uh, give me one second. I got stuck in my other packet. Oh, sorry. What happens? Yeah. Then you'll wake up in the middle of the night like this. There we go. You think I'd have this completely memorized by now, but I don't. All right. So for everyone who is viewing um, tonight's meeting via Orca Media, um, you can participate in tonight's development review board discussion via the Zoom platform using either video or telephone access options. So if you want the full video experience, you can type this link into your web browser. Um, actually, let me, well, I'll fix that later. Um, and I will get a notification that you want to get into the meeting. Um, and then alternatively, you can dial this phone number and plug in this meeting ID when prompted. And again, I'll get a little notification that you want to get into the meeting. Um, if anyone is having problems accessing the meeting, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. Um, please note that for anyone attending via Zoom, turning your video on is optional. We do ask that your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This reduces background noise. Um, if you, right now we have board members and applicants or applicant representatives on remotely. We don't have just general members of the public, but if a um, general member of the public does get on, please note that if you have questions um, or comments um, that are you know substantive, please raise your hand um, before you unmute yourself um, or before you were asked to unmute. Um, and then also please reserve the ch Zoom chat well, for troubleshooting or logistics questions only. Um, any questions or comments about uh, actual item on the agenda, you need to raise your hand and then wait to be called on by the chair. Um, in the event the public is unable to access tonight's meeting, then I would get notification of this through my email. Um, the meeting would need to be continued to a time and place certain. I'll now hand the meeting back over to the chair who has changed his seat. Uh, thank you, Meredith. Um, uh, agenda motion from any board member. Motion by Kevin, second by Joe. Uh, all those in favor of the approving agenda for tonight's meeting, say aye. Aye. I have an agenda. Um, all right. So, uh, yeah, there's one application this evening. Uh, I will do our public service disclaimer. Uh, we don't have any uh, other one other than the applicant, I believe, this evening and the board members, but uh, we'll say it anyway, uh, that uh, all questions and comments should uh, go through the chair. Um, and uh, you should not, you know, talk unless you are recognized to uh, to talk. Um, and if this we break those two rules, uh, we will end this meeting and continue it to a time certain. And uh, that will be quite unfortunate. Uh, so without further ado, um, I will actually say that I'm the vice chair acting as the chair tonight. Um, our chair is uh, not able to be here. Um, we hope she has a return um, maybe the next meeting, but we're not really sure. So looking forward to having uh, having Sharon back at some point this summer. Um, so who do we have for the 190 Montpelier, East Montpelier Road application? 
Hi, I'm uh, Brian Lane Carnes uh, with DeWolf Engineering. We're the civil engineer for the project. Uh, I'm here with David I, the landowner, um, but I'll be doing the majority of the presentation. Okay, thank you very much, Brian. Welcome and David, welcome. Um, so we'll get right into it and uh, swear you both in as witnesses uh, for this application tonight. Um, anyone else on there? Nope, just those two to be sworn in. Um, so all those interested in providing testimony on this application, would you please raise your right hand to be sworn in as witness? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? I do. Brian and David, um, check that off. Um, so Meredith, you want to give a, just a brief overview and uh, I'm sure Brian will give a, yeah. give a great presentation on the rep. <laughs> uh, so this application is mainly before the board because it is a major site plan. Um, the new greenhouse is over 2000 square feet, um, footprint. So it has to come to you. Um, there's a few, the, the parcel itself is a little odd. It's fairly unique. Um, and so there's some, some sort of tweaky things in the application um, about you know setbacks and landscaping requirements that have to do with the very specifics of this parcel um, and the fact that it's already you know been been developed for a very long time um, and so there's some items in red that really have most mostly to do with that that are sort of judgment calls that the board needs to make I've made some some, some suggestions as to where I think you should go on that um, I, I don't think it's a a particularly hard sell. Um, you know, I think it's I think it's a reasonable way to get forward on this one. Great. Thank you, Meredith. Uh, so, Brian, I'll just turn it over to you. And um, if you want to share the site plan uh, or have Meredith share the site plan while you're talking, uh, then feel free to request. I think that can be helpful for the board. Sure. Uh, Meredith, actually, if you could turn on sharing for me, it's useful for me to be able to point and talk at the same time. Yeah, no, that's not a problem. Give me just a second. I don't do that automatically anymore. Probably wise. <laughs> we had some issues. <laughs> if you give it a second, that should work. Yep. Uh, okay, sorry. Let me just bring this over to my side of the screen. Oh, that might not have worked. Sorry, give me one second. There we are. Um, so this is a, a just an overhead uh, view of the existing property um, with the existing development shown and approximate property lines uh, from the tax map. Um, so as we said, it's a little bit of an unusual lot um, because it's triangular in shape. And it is bordered on all three sides by um, rights of way. Uh, so you have the right of way for Route 2, East Montpelier Road along the frontage, uh, and then along both of the other sides of the property are railroad right of ways. Um, so this one here to the west is developed with a with a track, uh, and this one to the southeast is not. Um, but but both of these are railroad right of ways um, bordering the property. Um, also, as Meredith mentioned, the majority of the existing property is, is already developed um, with building is in the center here, the main parking lot. Um, this is the delivery and um, like uh, loading area around the back. Um, loading dock is back here. Um, this area here in the northeast corner is a, um, a display area that uh, is, is pretty much the only area of the site that currently isn't covered with impervious surface. This area is covered with um, like landscape fabric and mulch. I think it, you can't see the mulch in this picture here, but I, I believe it's mulched at this point. So um, as Meredith mentioned, the, the proposed project is to uh, construct a new 2,400 square foot greenhouse. Uh, the greenhouse will replace this existing greenhouse and this area that's currently only covered by a pergola. So it's it's has a structure, but it, there's no roof really. It's it's uh, currently open. Um, 
and all the area under the pergola here is currently used for um, outdoor display and, and plant sales um, during the season. So the purpose of the project is to create a little more greenhouse space to extend the um, plant selling season, um, just so not as many plants have to be stored outside. Um, you can also get a sense of the project from these photos that we submitted. Uh, I'll zoom in a little. So uh, existing building, obviously, this is from taken from across Route 2. So here's the driveway. Um, and then this, this is the existing greenhouse that will be replaced. And just in front of it, you can see the existing pergola with the plant sales, um, <clears throat> and all of which will be replaced with the, the proposed greenhouse. Um, happy to stop there for questions or I can and, um, run through some of the items that uh, Meredith has flagged in her report. Um, yeah, I think uh, we can maybe stop there and we can address the, just focus in on the maybe the first first item in the report, the dimensional standards. So um, that's kind of a, a two-part question. One on the setbacks, so I think we can get through the um, that one quickly. Um, if board members sort of understand the determination from staff on the triangular parcel. Um, seeing nods in the room that uh, the, you know, we agree <laughs> that, uh, you know, saying that there is, we treat this as a corner parcel um, as we would up elsewhere. Um, there's no rear setback. There's only side setbacks and a front setback with the front yard setback being along uh, Route 2 and the side yard setback being uh, along the railroad rights of way. Um, and I'm seeing that that's an affirmative on the board with that one. Um, the second part of this is, um, is, 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 you know, a not an existing non-conformity conformity to relate to impervious. Um, so I, I, Brian, I'll let you maybe talk about that specifically. I'm sure you have some ideas. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, um, the site is currently, uh, 89% impervious. Um, that's just partly because it's it's kind of hemmed in by the right of ways, and you can see here on the site plan that even the front the uh, right of way for Route Two is going through some of the existing parking area, just sort of um, an existing uh, quirk of the site uh, that we've inherited for this project. Um, and as I mentioned, the only real area that's that we're not considering impervious is this area in the northeast corner here. Um, that's a, you know a landscape fabric and mulch plant display area. Um, those of you that are familiar with the site, you may be familiar that there's, you know, sort of a network of sidewalks here next to the existing greenhouse and there uh, is like a crushed stone surface. Um, and we did investigate those areas and, and found that the crushed stone surface is really just a surface. And it's basically one layer of stones thick and then below that is compacted gravel. Um, so really this whole area where we're going to be placing the proposed greenhouse is uh, already impervious surface. So we're not making any increase to the existing nonconformity um, with the proposed project. Uh, and so we uh, believe that it's approvable on that basis. Board members have any impervious questions that? I guess I have one question. I, mean, I think that with these, we're, you know, obviously uh, over the past year, the question of impervious is something we, you know, want to pay a lot of attention to, um, right? But understand that every situation is, is you know, is different. Um, the question is, is sort of, you know, for me, the, the drainage on the site, you know, how is it currently configured? Um, you know, how... <laughs> <laughs> we turned uh, you know, what's, what's your proposed, you know, sort of configuration for collecting water from the roof of the greenhouse per se? And um, I don't know if you could talk about a little bit of that, Brian. Yeah, sure. So um, currently, you know, there's the existing greenhouse, um, which kind of sheds the roof sheds to the, say, north and south, the way this plane is oriented. Um, and this area uh, that does, you know, with the pergola and the walkways kind of drains to the east. So everything ends up down in the in the driveway from this area of the site down in the driveway below. Um, there's also a gutter along this north end of the building, which you can see is here is piped underground and again comes out uh, sort of on the east area of the property. 
Um, let me just get back to this map. Uh, so all of that drains into over here in the uh, railroad right away. There's kind of a self-contained low spot um, that doesn't have any um, further drainage as far as we were able to determine uh, in our site visit. So um, it's it's possible that somewhere there's a culvert over into the next property over but i i we like i said we weren't able to find it um but um because the entire area that we're um redeveloping to to construct the new or the proposed greenhouse uh is currently in previous area um then there won't be any increase to the peak rate or volume of runoff from the site um and then we are maintaining the existing drainage pattern so uh, we're planning to collect uh, drainage off the roof, uh, which, and then uh, route it down again to across this gravel driveway and into this low area here adjacent to the railroad tracks. Ken, yep. Yeah, can you can you tell us how did the uh, site fare last July during the flood? We had water all around the building but it did not go in the building or the greenhouse can you hear me yeah. yep yep and the the uh proposed greenhouse is outside of the floodplain so the floodplain boundary is shown on the plan here so that's the edge of the 100 year floodplain boundary there great thank you so I see you call out like a water recycling system for the greenhouse. Is, is some of that water that gets captured on site? Yeah, so I thank you for reminding me I should talk about that. So um, we had been talking with David about uh, what would happen with the excess of uh, plant watering water uh, that isn't absorbed by the plants. Uh, and so our original thought was that we would have a recycling system um, after working through the operation a little bit more and um, discussing ways to kind of minimize or optimize the uh, the watering system in there and talking about how the existing greenhouse is managed. Um, we've actually revised that management plan so that any um, excess water from watering plants um, will go onto the floor of the greenhouse. The um, employees will squeegee it up essentially because it, it's very minimal. It's probably too minimal amount of water to support a recycling system. Um, and then it will be collected into um, a container and then uh, taken off site for um, appropriate legal disposal. Can I, can I just comment? Cause, yeah. but, cause we had talked about this, Brian. And so we will have a drain that will go into an outside little catch tank. Oh, I think I guess I thought you I thought that was understood, but we'll have a drain. It, it, it it's very minimal on it, like the current greenhouse that we have. We basically squeegee it. it. There's a drain, but I've never seen water come out of the drain outside. It just there just isn't a lot of water. But I thought we had talked about actually having a drain so that if there was any excess water, it would go down into a catch tank outside. And then at some point we can just dispose of it, have someone come pump it or spread, use it on the trees and shrubs. It, it's my, my question when I saw the water recycling was wondering if you were capturing any of the water from the, the gutters and runoff from the building to be used as irrigation. No. I just, I just was not to say that that's the, that's a requirement, something you have to do. I was just curious, looking at the plan, whether that was part of the plan. <laughs> no, no. I talked to some, some greenhouses and um, no one had a, a, they just didn't have any solutions for recycling the water. Um, Cause I did initially want to recycle, but no one had any good solutions. And then in talking with my greenhouse manager, we talked about it and she's like, you know, we, we really don't have much water running off to begin with. The the plants absorb it. We've got, we'll have um, a drip line for the hanging baskets. So all of the hanging baskets will have a drip line and they're just, there really won't be much water on the floor. So my idea was, I thought 
Brian was okay with it, but just do have a drain. And then probably once a year, either, you know, have wind river come pump it or just read, put a sump pump in there and just use it to water the trees and shrubs that day, something like that. Yeah, sorry, I miss I misunderstood our conversation. I think, but yeah, I apologize, uh, Brian. Yep, yeah, no problem. Either way, it's it's going to a tank and and will either either be used on site on the plants for you know that are uh, on the site or uh, you know pumped and legally disposed of. Like maybe you had a question, Alex. Maybe not. No. Okay. Um. Does anyone else need any more information on the impervious? Uh, coverage question oh, yeah Catherine. yeah and uh forgive me if this is obvious but can you talk us through the crushed stone plant display whether there's a, that's um off to the side whether there's any drainage function over there so that you mean this area here yeah yeah so that's just staying exactly as it is now um, there's no, there's no, um, stormwater management function to it. Cause as I said, it's, it's surface with crushed stone, but only very minimally. And below that is, um, compacted gravel, um, similarly to like a gravel driveway or parking lot. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I guess so just to recap on that, I, my understanding is just correct me if I'm <laughs> if I'm wrong is that the. The drainage from the site, most of it drains down and collects in the, in kind of a, a a natural swale adjacent to the railroad, not in a formal sort of you know treatment system, but uh, you know it kind of ponds there before slowly either infiltrating or making its way south to the river that where it would drain if it were to actually more or less it it kind of depends on if there's a culvert under the railroad or not, but yeah, it would either flow along the tracks to the, where the bridge is, where the railroad crosses, or it would go, if there's a culvert, existing culvert, it would be the railroad's culvert, it would go across to the neighboring property to the east. But there's no change proposed to that. That's all existing drainage pathway. I guess my big question is wanna make sure that the existing runoff from the impervious is being you know treated in some way so that, you know, <laughs> We don't necessarily have a non-conformity with you know untreated water you know going every which way uh, and we're missing an opportunity to uh, you know to deal with it. But it seems what you're describing seems like it's a it, it's an effective treatment uh, from my perspective. Board members have any other questions on that? All right, on to the next. All right. Um. So I guess the, the next one was just sort of a note about demolition um, and uh, making sure that debris is uh, effectively removed within 60 days from the site. Um, seems like that's a reasonable uh, ask. <clears throat> Applicant can confirm. Are you? Yeah, for sure. It'll be removed in a couple of days and hauled off somewhere. Um, Great. We usually we often put that as just like a condition as a reminder, uh, which okay we can do, uh, but no big deal. Um, and uh, so we've discussed uh, the next topic here would be you know, stormwater management, which we've discussed a bit about. Um, and uh, staff concluded uh, you know not required to submit a stormwater management plan for this. Uh, I think that falls right in line with the discussion about impervious that we've had in the. Um, what not, Kevin? Do you have any? Look like you're going to say something. <laughs> oh, uh, finish what you're going to say. I do have a question. Uh, no, nope, that was it. That was just staff okay. found that a stormwater management plan was not required, and um, and we kind of discussed a little bit right. about that already. <laughs> well, I, my question is is about timing. Uh, we're in the middle of the gardening season. Uh, is this work going to going to be done before the the gardening season is over, or is it? Are you waiting until the fall? fall it takes eight to ten weeks for the greenhouse to be built and i i haven't ordered it yet until i was sure that i could get the permit so um when i'm sure i'll get the permit i'll order it and they said it takes about 10 weeks to erect and complete so i'd like to do it anywhere between september 1st and middle of september 
Um, okay, so um, next topic would be uh, landscaping and uh, <coughs> um, uh, I guess Brian or David, would you mind going through sort of the existing conditions of the of the landscaping? I think that'd just be helpful to frame the conversation. Sure. So uh, the majority of the existing well. Uh, landscaping is along the frontage of the property. So we submitted some photos of what that currently looks like. So this is starting from the right side of the property as you're looking at it from the road and moving across to the left. Um, so there are currently, I think it's seven, but I'm just going to double check that number. Give me one second. Uh, Seven, yes, seven in these large mature trees across the property frontage. Um, and then in between them, there are planting beds with a mix of um, mostly perennials and shrubs. And David, I'm, you can correct me if there's other things in there. Um, so this is sort of to the right of the of the entry here. Um, here's the entry itself. And then a, a bit to the left of the entry, you can sort of see the few trees and the landscaping in that area. Uh, it continues along the front of the building, um, and then there's a small area just at the end of the property where there's less landscaping along the frontage. So, um, but as Meredith uh, mentioned uh, in the report, and as as we mentioned in our cover letter, um, the site comes pretty close to meeting the street tree requirements, um, and these are quite large, mature trees. So. Um, you know, we feel that for a, an existing site, um, you know, this is uh, it's pretty appropriate and, and meets the um, intent of the regulation. Um, and then the other piece is the total, and then also provides, you know, shade for the parking lot. Um, and then the other piece is the total site landscaping. So one thing after reading through the, the staff comments for the proposal, I noted that Meredith noted that the Trees aren't don't count towards total site landscaping, but I started thinking, well, there's quite a lot of additional uh, shrub and perennial landscaping along the frontage that uh, may count towards the total landscaping requirement. So um, we don't have a survey of that area, but I estimated the size of those planting beds um, based off of overhead photos and, uh, you know, I'm estimating that there's roughly 2,400 square feet of that planting bed um, along the um, the frontage. And I mean, that's kind of inclusive of the trees because there's landscaping in under them. Um, so if that's um, appropriate to consider in the total site landscaping, um, then, then the site may actually be uh, in compliance or at least very close to being in compliance. It's my inclination as the board. I don't want to get into uh, saying, uh, you know, you got to plant a tree here, plant a tree there, and that would be, uh, you know, sufficient for us. Uh, I'd sort of uh, rather, um, you know, have 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 you come up with the proposal of are there areas for improvements of the links gaping to get it closer, um, you know, or or are there not? Are you are you tapped out? Um, I mean, I I, I would sure. agree close if not already there, uh, but. Um, I don't know if anyone else on the board has any thoughts on that. So I'm also happy to address the potential for adding additional landscaping. Um, so as you can see in this map, and again, this is tax map boundaries, so take them with a, a grain of salt, but uh, you know, this is pretty uh, consistent with the survey we had of the property from the 90s. Um, you know, the existing parking is right up to the front property line um, and then goes right up to the sidewalk in front of the building. Um, you know, we have these already used outdoor display areas, um, this outdoor display area in this area. And then, you know, on this on the east and or sorry, west and southeast sides. In the existing driveway is pretty close to the property line and, and also on the southeast existing driveway and existing um, exterior material storage. So, um, you know, there's really not anywhere on the site to add landscaping 
uh, that wouldn't re wouldn't require removing some of the existing uh, improvements on the site. Okay. Um, can you just flip to the um, the site plan, the proposed site plan, real quick? And so that area, um, I guess, be west of the proposed, you know, greenhouse. Is that that's still going to be um, sort of outdoor plant storage, kind of like it is now? Yes. So although they're not permanent plants, uh, <laughs> I guess I would say that there's going to be quite a lot of plants that are going to be there on a regular basis. <laughs> uh, is it yeah, I mean, you can see in the photos in the summertime, you know, they're it's pretty green over there with all those plants. Yeah. This is probably a better photo to see it. And this this is the area of the site we're talking about right here. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I guess if uh, you don't, I'll just speak hypothetically here. If you don't decide to get in the wood pellet business and uh, start stashing wood pellets there instead of uh, plants, then <laughs> I think I'm, <laughs> I'm okay. Meredith, yes? <laughs> yeah, can I just, so if we're talking about the total site landscaping yep. requirement, just to sort of refocus yep. the standard, right, that comes into play here where we have a site that's currently non-conforming with respect to impervious cover, which is what we've got. Right. Yep. Um, the applicant has to demonstrate that as a result of that non-conformity, right, the, the excess impervious cover, the site cannot reasonably meet the total landscaping requirement. In that instance, the board can waive some or all of the total landscaping required. So a reminder that the total site landscaping has to actually be on the parcel. So all of that stuff along the frontage is actually in the public right of way. So right, all of those shrubs, as far as I can tell from the site plan that was submitted, all of those shrubs, all of those trees, that's all in the public right of way. So it can count as as the street trees. Street trees are allowed to be in the public right of way. So that one's that one's fine. There's just a tiny, like maybe a half of a small tree, right? That one isn't the issue. It's the total site landscaping, which is supposed to be planted trees and shrubs with proper growing areas on the site. But we have this current nonconformity with respect to impervious sure. cover, and it's not like impervious cover that is just excess parking lot that somebody doesn't need, right? Yep. It's it's and it's a really constrained yep. lot. And I think I put a note in here about this. You also have railroad right of way. The railroad is really unhappy if you plant trees around their <laughs> yeah. their edges. So just factors to consider yeah. in this particular no. situation. Sure, absolutely. So that I mean somebody maintains that landscaping uh inside the public right of way, right? Is that maintained by this we maintain. Yeah. Um from what you're just saying there, I, I mean, I think it's a question is the board. Do we think that there are opportunities for landscaping? I think it's it's it's, it's difficult. Yeah. Very difficult. I mean, I think it's pretty green the way it is, and uh, um, you know, the, the the applicant is staying within the existing uh, feel of the place. Absolutely. <clears throat> um. So do we have like uh have to do a formal waiver or the applicant requests a waiver? So an applicant, so a waiver was requested with the application. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got it. Um yep. yeah, I see. I don't see an issue. No. Um uh, <clears throat> good there. Um so uh lighting. Uh, Brian, did you get to review the lighting? Have any comments? Um, the so the lighting is is will be interior to the greenhouse, but obviously, as Meredith noted, being a greenhouse, you'll at least somewhat be able to see it from the outside. And um, so, um, David, I don't know if you had a chance to review that proposed condition, but uh, 
you know, if the, if the board is willing to condition the lights, which I don't believe have been selected yet, um, to meet the, the requirements of either being less than 2000 lumens per fixture or, um, be shielded, um, seems like a reasonable way to move forward to me. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good here. I'm seeing lots of nods in the room. Yep. Um, that was it here in my notes when the major uh, yep. major topics and issues. Did I miss anything, Meredith? Uh, no, just as long as you guys are happy with the design and compatibility conclusion and just note, I forgot to transfer that lighting condition into the draft motion, but the language is there on page 12 for the condition. I feel like, uh, we always ask the question of major site plan about bicycle parking and, uh, what, uh, uh I'm going to ask the question. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the bike path does. Yeah, you know, it's just on the goes right there. Uh, you know, is there a spot for employees to or patrons to show up and park their bike on the site? Uh, there's, I mean, we're not proposing one. I'm David, I'm not familiar enough with the site to know if there is dedicated bicycle parking anywhere. No, but can't you? I mean, we've had people often will will like park their bike by my road sign and secure it to the road sign. I don't know what you would need for bike parking. <laughs> I'm not familiar with that. It's not something we've, uh, we, it's something we've encouraged that, but haven't uh, necessarily conditioned and really advocated for super hard, but figured we'd bring it up. We've always talked about it. Um, I guess could leave it if there's opportunities to do so then you know we we implore you to do so and um don't need to condition a permit on it uh, but something to keep in mind okay we've seen people ride their bikes to casellas <laughs> believe it or not with kids on the bike and, and we're going to see more of that with particularly with uh, e-bikes becoming a, a thing. Yeah. I mean, they're much more uh, available and accessible for uh, those types of short commutes. Have those parked e-bikes, which would be suitable to for going to Agway. Right. So I yep. can apply to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you set? I'm, yeah. Um, any final questions from the board, no comments, um, or anything from Brian and uh, David? I think we're set unless the board has another question. Okay. Gladly accept the motion. Uh, motion to grant the request for major site plan approval for construction of a 2,400 square foot greenhouse, including demolition of the existing greenhouse, as presented in the application Z 2024-0055 and supporting and supplemental materials subject to the condition that the lights inside the greenhouse either emit less than 2,000 lumens per fixture or if emitting 2,000 lumens or more, the lights will have to be fully shielded. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Second. The motion by Joe uh, for approval with some conditions, the second by Kevin. Um, <clears throat> any discussion on the motion? Uh, seeing none, we'll move to a roll call vote. Uh, Joe, how do you vote? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Alex? Yes. Kevin? Yes. And Rob, the, myself, votes yes. Uh, that is unanimously approved. And uh, Meredith will work with you on the final details uh, as far as permits and approval. Yeah. Uh, so given the short week, I probably won't have a decision ready for you this week, but try and get it for next week. And there are no pre 
permit conditions. So once we have a final written decision and I get Rob's signature on it, we'll have that and the permit ready for you at the same time. Thank you. And uh, what we usually do is I also try and get, in this instance, um, Michelle's, I can't remember, did you guys, did you file for the building permit? I think you did. Got too many things going on, but we'll try and get the building permit at the same time, if not shortly thereafter. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, David. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you all for your time. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks. Okay, the minutes from um, June 17th. I can make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll right. second. Second by Alex. Um, all those in favor of approval of the June 17th minutes, say aye. 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 Minutes are approved. Um, so looks like we may not have a midsummer meeting. No, Does it look like no it? we don't. I don't have any applications. I don't have any applications for July 15th. And I will be out of state on the 5th. Um, so the next meeting is August 19th. Oh, um, wow. Lovely. And we, I, have, <laughs> oh, summer. I, <laughs> I have an application for the 19th. Um, we may have more because um, the yeah. deadline is that a might week be a, away still. That might be a long meeting then, huh? Yeah. Um, it depends. I mean, we won't. It, it, there comes a point where we're like, um, they might be really tired once they get to you. So do you want to just bump it another two weeks? We've always got the right to, <laughs> you know, to bump it. We yeah. Yeah. Take on as much as we yeah. like in one night or a little. Yeah. So it depends. <laughs> but right now I have I have a final subdivision for 585 Elm Street. So that was the two parcels with the floodplain to the rear, the two parcel subdivision. You guys saw it. Yep. There's an existing oh, yeah. house, but the, the develop, there's developable land in front that doesn't have any floodplain. Oh, right. Um, on Elm Street. That's the one on Elm Street, right? That's the one on Elm Street. So I've got that that whole application, um, and it's I think I already loaded it on the pending applications page, if anybody wants to look. But that's the only thing I have so far, but may have some more. Okay. Well, great. So, yeah, enjoy Enjoy a big chunk of summer without having to come and see me. Yeah, yeah slow it down. So, I mean, how did July 1st That's get us? <laughs> oh, no, like I'm sure it's going to get busy. Yeah. You know, and it's not, we're seeing a lot of administrative permits. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Audra's replacement, Nick Gauthier, has started today. Oh, so, it's actually kind of nice. It's going to be a little slow for him to sure, get up for speed. Um, but yeah, we're back to three permitting staff. So, right. and how are you doing on new office space? Um, yeah, I don't know about that yet. <laughs> we just today was the first day of the new fiscal year, so um, you know, they, they, they give give them a little time. I don't get to I don't get to weigh in on that so much, but um, hopefully we'll have new space at some point before too much longer. But uh, we'll see. Budgets, budgets, budgets. <laughs> um, I, I believe our, our ticket attendance portion may be disappearing because of the program no longer exists i'm or... saying what oh oh yeah so yes that is the other thing um because we're in the new yeah i need to take that off of here i forgot about that um the uh stipend program has ended um so yes i can take the take attendance like off. likely not because it was yeah, it was a success, I think, uh, and well, well used and well appreciated. It's just uh, we had a flood and uh, we yeah. didn't have any money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So city budget for this year was was paired way, way, way back on a lot of different things. Um, I think it's great right the city was able to do that. Yeah, set precedent that is. A yeah, good and approach. And... The, the hope is that they'll do that again. I mean, it was definitely an equity situation. Um, yeah. So if that pops back up again. Then we'll do it again. So, um, okay. Thank you. Great. Well, motion to uh, adjourn. We still have a quorum to do so. You do. You're for it. <laughs> Second. Oh. I don't, he can't make the motion. Oh, I'll make the motion then. I'll second. Yeah.
All right. Motion by Joe, second by Catherine to adjourn the meeting. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Done. Right. Okay.